Captain Farmer will provide an overview of using OpenCPN in river navigation based on years of actual use on a commercial vessel. Both Captain and Mate Farmer have extensive navigation training and experience. We've cruised both sail and power boats, but are back to our love of sailing now, and open CPN will definitely be aboard. Electronic navigation using plotters like open CPN seems deceptively simple. Unlike your car GPS, there are no streets to follow. You absolutely must master marine navigation to effectively use any electronic plotter software or hardware. Learning navigation using OpenCPN in a navigation class may be easier than mastering paper plotting and its required tools, but it still requires careful study. Plotters are only one of many available tools to assist you. Often learning to use new software or electronic hardware can seem overwhelming at first. Seeing a quick start overview will let you grasp basic functionality so you have an idea of what to expect. Being exposed to some of the many capabilities will get you started so you can begin learning easily and quickly. Your hardware chart plotter may have different icons, but probably similar functionality. Practice with your software or hardware plotter is the only way to learn. An ECTIS system has many additional inputs that we don't need like waterproof door statuses and so forth, but its existence and use helps development for us. We obviously don't need a full International Marine Organization course lasting two weeks, but we do definitely need some training to use OpenCPN. RNC and paper charts contain much less information and they're being phased out beginning in 2020. We should be using ENCs whenever possible. All electronic charting systems convert electronic chart data to useful images with GPS ships data overlaid. All electronic charting systems provide similar assistance functions, but the displays may be very different and you need navigation training to use all of them. Hydrographic underwater data is much less accurate than aerial photograph and mapping of land data, and we must remember this at all times. The effect of zooming in and out on waypoints and routes need to be thoroughly understood to use OpenCPN. There's a lot of help information and a user's forum to answer questions and take suggestions for changes or additions to this freeware software developed by Ocean Sailors. In-program help is always available, but the much more extensive complete help files require internet access or download. The help information is not always perfectly up to date with the latest version because volunteers develop it, but it is extremely helpful. Both internal and external links are available to provide help. The entire user's manual should be read by every serious navigator and please take navigation courses. 
There are two primary sets of icons in version 5 on the standard display as shown here. Be sure to review the man overboard functions. You can hide this set of icons by clicking on the hamburger at the top. The options display allows us to select various options for the main type display. The canvas layout allows you to use split screen mode. These options as shown should be used for inland river navigation. These other option icons are used to install charts, connect to GPS, AIS, and so forth. The chart display options allow you to tailor the display to be the most useful on any particular cruise on vector charts only. Zooming in and zooming out shows a larger or smaller area of the chart. Follow ship position works with GPS input on the water when connected. The options hamburger hides or shows the chart panel options shown on the left here. As you zoom in, some important data may appear that was not visible earlier. When entering an anchorage or marina, be sure to always zoom in. There are many layers of helpful data on ENC charts that can be displayed when needed. Marks or waypoints are location markers on a marine chart that you have placed to assist you in navigation. At the cursor location, right click and select drop mark. See the default triangle mark symbol on the sailing line near Concord Marina. Right click on the mark and select properties. You should use a waypoint naming sequence that makes sense for your area. We suggest river abbreviation, river mile, and then a descriptor abbreviation. You can turn on or off individual types of displayed items as needed. Change the default triangle dot icon to one that has meaning for you and your crew, like the anchor shown here. There are a lot of coastal icon types and you can add others yourself. A route is composed of a collection of connected waypoints and can start anywhere. You can either join existing waypoints or create new ones as shown here. Waypoints on a river usually do not follow the sailing line closely, so total distances will be slightly short. Route properties are a valuable planning tool. Don't forget to correct the sailing time inland using start and stop miles. You can click on any single line in the route properties and copy the data as text to paste into Excel or for other uses. Routes created in OpenCPN at home at your leisure can then be exported as GPX files and imported into many hardware chart plotters. Routes can be run in either direction in OpenCPN as needed. Be sure you're comfortable with the information presented so far before you proceed. We're covering a lot of possibly new, detailed information here. 
If you are experiencing information overload, pause the video and take a break. Think about what we've covered so far and come back to finish up. Welcome back. After planning, OpenCPN works very well as an actual navigation tool. You can run it on a laptop or tablet. Clicking on the ship icon will start following the ship's location from GPS data input, moving the chart as it goes. Things can get confusing when zoomed out with a lot of text displayed, but approaching a harbor or marina, you need all of it. You can always experiment with different display options and return to base or standard at any time. OpenCPN can switch your computer display to a darker format for nighttime operation. The F6 key dims the display brightness in steps that are hard to see in this slide. Course up and look ahead allow you to see more in front of you along your course. The GPS speed predictor shows where you and any AIS targets will be in the number of minutes that you entered. The ships icon lets you set your ship's orientation. When trails are activated, OpenCPN follows, tracks your progress, and saves the data. It can then be converted to a route. You can hide a route by clicking on the I after the route icon is clicked, or you can select and activate one. This route is now active, blue changed to red, but here we have no GPS input, so the boat is shown in black. Once a route is active, a sidebar on the right gives updated route information. Right-clicking on an object can provide a cursor pick report like the launch ramp information shown here. Some data is displayed on charts, but much more is available with a cursor pick report, like the rec shown here. Other chart data and another cursor pick report are shown on this slide. Data on marinas and landmarks is available with the cursor pick report. We hope this brief overview has given you an idea of what is possible using OpenCPN. If AIS is available and configured, it provides information on other vessels that are transmitting AIS data. The SVDR plugin can record your trip details. Coast Guard Inland Buoy data is available for update weekly, and data update is quick and easy with internet access. This is a quick and dirty overview to get you started only. Please study navigation carefully before using any plotter. Thanks for watching this introduction to OpenCPN. Now get busy, install it, and practice using it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more useful navigational information.